Hey everybody, it's Jim of Anime Educated. Today we're going to meet Tina Naraki, who is an, a 2D animator. She works up in Canada and she's worked on uh, Cuphead and a bunch of other uh, animation shorts that you might have seen. And um, yeah, so here she is. Welcome to 2023 and uh, hopefully it's going good for you so far. Yeah, you know, good start to the new year. Everything's okay. I'm happy to be here. Now you you're a uh, you're a 2D animator and you work up in Canada. Like, how did you get into animation? I mean, what was the thing that kind of you discovered uh, that made you want to do this kind of work? So I loved animation as a kid. I remember it was like the big um, you know event every time there was a new Disney film that came out on VHS. Uh, my father would find the VHS and come home with it, and we we're so excited to watch it. The first movie I remember um, coming from Poland, I'm an immigrant. As a child, I came to Canada. The first movie I remember is Little Mermaid that we watched, you know, and so it had a big impact on me. I loved animation, but never considered it um, as a career early on. I love to draw, I love to paint, and I loved theater. I was, you know, in all these theater productions as a kid. I loved acting. And so when I got older, I was like, okay, you know, I really do want to pursue art. Uh, or I want to do acting. Um, and I was, you know, very serious about my art at a very young age. I started painting at age 12 in oil paints. Um, I had my first solo exhibit at age 14 and, you know, did a lot of painting um, growing up. And so I took a course called illustration and design um, when I, you know, was going to, uh, we call it CJEP. It's like a college course. It's not a degree, so I don't have a degree, no piece of paper, but it was, you know, it was supposed to be a type of class, a type of three-year program that's going to get you to work. So they really were focused on the industry, on getting people working, and that was wonderful because all our professors were working professionals, and they were very much geared not towards like an art degree for art's sake, but very much a practical degree that's going to get you a job, and the program was called Illustration and Design. And it was, you know, about illustration and they had one teeny tiny 2D animation course like squeezed in there just for fun. And I, I did that one class and I was like, holy hell, this is both animation, you know, this is a mix of theater and drawing. And so I was hooked. So that's how the, the journey started. So what, what were some of your influences as a kid? You know, with you said Little Mermaid, Disney, I guess. Uh, is there any yeah, other? Yeah, so no? I was a, a weird um, child. I was an extreme tomboy, uh, which doesn't, you know, show now. But I was, you know, wearing baggy T-shirts. I liked sports. I like, you know, rolling in the mud. I loved saber fighting. I did archery. Um, and my big dream was to do horseback riding. So um, as an immigrant, we didn't have much money. And the art kind of happened because of that. We didn't have money. So I was like, you know, I'm pretty good at drawing. So I started drawing horses and then I would peddle my art at stables. I'd be like, buy this horse drawing or I could paint your horse for you. And I started getting clients that way uh, because I was pretty good at it. And so I would make a little bit of money, spend that money to learn how to ride. And then I would paint some more and so on and so forth. And then as I got older, because I was super into like history and as I said, saber fighting and archery, I learned how to do archery off of horseback in Poland. So like you're riding and you're shooting, it's really fun. And I started painting like hyper-realistic battles and warriors and God knows what else. So not a very cartoony beginning to my career. It was very serious. I was learning anatomy. I was, you know, uh, very into uh, model drawing. I remember I really wanted to go to model drawing, but I was too young, technically, because you're drawing naked people. Uh, so I was like, I think 12 or 13, and I wanted to go draw the model to learn anatomy. And so my mom had to sign a waiver, and she had to sit in the room with me <laughs> to be like, it's fine, my daughter can draw naked people. <laughs> like, we're okay. So yeah, so I did that very early on. And, um, and then, you know, as I went to illustration and design, we were asked to do caricature and more kind of cartoony things. And I, and I learned animation for the first time. And so then that's when I started developing kind of um, a more caricatured style. But early on, it was all about realism, which I think is a great strong base. I think everybody should learn how to draw from life and then you can move on and do caricature afterwards. I, I come from a traditional background long, long ago. 
Uh, and uh, I'm just curious, is the, is the workflow the same? I mean, do you animate everything and then hand it off to someone else to in between it? Or do you do everything for um, each scene? So uh, most of the productions I worked on, I haven't had an in-betweener. I do my own in-betweens. Uh, but I do uh, only do like what's called, you know, the position of a rough animator. So I do tie down my animations, but I don't do the final cleanup. So that's another position. Somebody else does cleanup, somebody else does color. Um, so I just do the movement. But I've worked only once with in-betweeners, and that was on Space Jam and New Legacy. And it was only for camera moves. So, you know, we would animate everything on twos. And because of a camera move, it had to be on ones. So it was another company that was charged to do the in-betweens uh, just so the camera move was nice and smooth. But uh, generally speaking, I'm pretty quick at what I do. So it actually probably is just as fast for me just to do my own in-betweens and you know get the, get the animation out there. Yeah. No, that's great. That's a good, great early beginning to get all that stuff under your belt and also have other you know, interests. Uh, like, I mean, when you said horseback riding, I'm like, oh, okay. And then when you said archery, oh, okay. But then combining the two, <laughs> I was like, I'm hearing the sounds of like, you know, ta -ta, ta -ta. <laughs> warrior princess yes. it's, you know. it's ah. not easy and it was funny because um this is something i learned in poland there's an amazing master in poland who taught me and supposedly south korea is really into it and so he's really good and he fly before pandemic he would fly to south korea quite often for competitions uh because they they actually have like compet it's a competitive sport there um it's the you know it's an asian bow uh, style of archery so the bows are a lot squatter but not like the long bow bridge long bow and you don't shoot with two fingers like robin hood you shoot with your thumb um so and the arrows on the opposite side it's, a, it's an interesting style of archery and then of course you add that to riding a horse you have to you know first of all you have when a horse you can only practice at a walk like when the horse is walking slowly and the second speed is a trot, but the trot is bouncy, so you can't shoot. So you have to go straight to a gallop. So you practice walking, and then you have to like just go straight to a gallop. And what's most fascinating is first, if you study an animation, you will know that when a horse is galloping, there's only one second where all his hoofs are off the ground. So that floating moment is the only moment where you can release because you have a steady motion. <laughs> so like on top of all the things that archery is complicated, but then you have to wait for that moment, like, you know, da -da, then, you know, like that's only when you can release. And on top of it, by the time you release, you think about releasing your, like the horse is moving in the air. So you have to plan like three feet or so ahead <laughs> so that if you release, you actually hit the thing. Like, yeah, it's, it's lots of fun though. I enjoy it. And when people are chasing you, shooting at you, I bet you that's really hard to deal with. <laughs> yeah, right? that is much harder <laughs> when that happens. You're like, boom, boom. And then but you have to turn around so and shoot. When I was a kid, I studied voltage for a little bit, which is gymnastics on horses, where you like learn to jump on the horse and, you know, you can flip backwards. And that's something that's really important if you're fighting, uh, because like you could be shooting people ahead of you. But if you have people behind, you can flip backwards and then shoot backwards and flip again while riding and then be facing the right way. And yeah. Do, do they call you? You're working on Cuphead, doing little 1930s little things. And they're like, Tina, we need you. We need you. you. <laughs> <laughs> choppers out front and you go and you get in there and you get your bow you know all right let's go let's do this let's do it <laughs> I, got, I gotta be back by morning i gotta finish up cup i have a deadline <laughs> <laughs> you're like shoo, shoo, you know firing off and oh, that's exactly is, right is this horse okay for you well it'll do it's not my horse but if that's what you want me to use i guess so that's it's great. funny because again my my trainer who does this when he goes to Korea, obviously he can't bring his own horses. There's no way. Um, so they ask him like, oh, what type of horse would you like? And he's like, a fast one. <laughs> like, that's like, that's his thing. Cause he's, go. he's extremely good. Like he's, I have, I'll send you some videos um, okay. on YouTube of my trainer, but he's, wow. he's impressive. So very good. Wow. So you, you've been doing that. And now I heard that you're, you're going to take next year and actually work on a, a project of your own. In 2023, I have three project lines up, lined up, which are for clients. Um, so still uh, in video games, but also for an animated short. However, I have been dreaming for 10 years 
to do my own animated short, hopefully a three minute short, so something achievable. And I've been thinking about the story and you know, I'm sure we all have had these moments where I would keep putting it off because I'm like, oh, I'm not good enough yet. I'm not good enough at animation. I would fuck this up. Like, no, 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 let's, let's, let's wait. And then at, this, at some point you have to be like, okay, <laughs> you know, I think I'm good enough. This is fine. Even if it's not gonna be perfect, at least it'll be something. And so um, I already had the story and I really want it to be a collaboration. I didn't want to do everything myself. Uh, I value other people's input. So I wanted to work with a character designer, a storyboard artist, a script writer, and then I could focus just on the animation and have you know all these people around me, somebody for layout, somebody for background painting. So I don't have to do all of it myself. And another thing, which I've always dreamt of, so the story is like has a slightly feminist, I guess, um, narrative. And having worked in video games most of my life, most of the time you're working with straight white men, like all the time. And for years, I would, you know, it's been 16 years ago that I started. For years, I would walk into a studio and I would scan the room and everybody's male, except for maybe the receptionist, who's like usually a woman or HR might be a woman. And that's about it. Thankfully, things are changing. But for most of my career, this is how it's been. So on this short, I'm planning to hire only women if I can. <laughs> so a lot of women, maybe people who are LGBTQ plus, but no straight white men allowed. Okay, so I can't I guess I gotta like not give you my resume now and uh, no, all that no, stuff. I'm sorry. I'm gonna discriminate for once <laughs> in the opposite direction. But it's just you know it's okay. That's all right. Fine. That's <laughs> that's all right. I, I understand. It's okay. I, yeah, no offense taken, sure. <laughs> but yes, I mean for what's exciting about that though is that I find there's a great push now um to give you know voices that have been push into the background, you know, a bit more of a platform. I've been working currently on a, a wonderful short um, for a studio that is uh, run by people in the United States and it was founded by a black man and it's hiring predominantly black animators and like the core team are all people of color. And um, I got hired as freelance to do some animation for them. Uh, obviously I'm, I'm not, I'm white, but like the whole point is that this is a story about black people made um, you know, by black people. And I think that's wonderful. And sometimes like, and I've never seen that for like, you know, a feminist story. Let's, let's see what women have to say um, in order to tell this story. And I think that's going to be really exciting. And the way hopefully it will happen is that I'll work a little bit and start the pre-production as I'm working full time. And then I have an amazing producer. Her name is Felicity Moreland. And she was working for the last five years on an amazing documentary film. And it is about the state of 2D animation in the world today. And it's very interesting because I was her first interview. And a lot of people at that time, especially people of my generation, were depressed about 2D animation because everything had moved to 3D, at least in the Western world. Obviously in Japan and Korea and all that, like 2D never died, never went anywhere. But here, in the States and Canada, there was a huge move to, um, to 3D. And then Cuphead was such a runaway success and people were so thrilled with the fact that it was hand-drawn and not only hand-drawn in the sense of every frame is drawn, but also drawn on paper traditionally. And you can see that kind of human mistake, like the little imperfections, which make it so perfect. And people were, were super excited about it. And so I was her first interview and I feel the tides have turned since then, if so to speak. There's more and more exciting 2D projects happening. There seems to be this revival of interest in things that are hand-drawn and things that are frame by frame. Uh, so the documentary kind of explores what was going on and what's been going on in the last five years. And she's had interviews with amazing names like James Baxter, uh, you know, Bill Plimpton, like a bunch of incredible animators. So please do go see it. It's gonna come out hopefully fairly soon. Uh, I think it's gonna do a festival run first and then it's gonna be available to watch, but definitely somebody to talk to. So Felicity's wrapping up this project and she did a lot of it self-funded, but she also got grants in order to make the production. And she is my producer on my new short. And uh, she's bringing in all that knowledge of how to get the thing off the ground and how to get it funded. Because 
I am so adamant that people should not work for free <laughs> that I will never ask, I will never like ask people for favors to do anything for me for free. I want to pay them. And what's more, I want to pay them what they're worth. Therefore, we need funding. And so I'm going to be looking to apply for grants, but also probably a Kickstarter campaign at some point. No, oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Whenever, when, when do you think that might be happening? Like later in the year, maybe? Or? Uh, so I think January, February is definitely going to be where we're starting pre-production. And so I think in, in early, like early spring, I'll start, I want to start kind of showing the process early on just to get people interested so that when I do have a Kickstarter campaign, there's already a following. Felicity, first thing she did when she got on board, she got me like an IP address, a Twitter account, a Facebook, an Instagram, like it's all like all the, the name is set up. So as soon as I have anything that I can share, we're going to start sharing that. Um, I already have a concept artist on board. She did some preliminary concepts in January. My script writer starts writing the script. So my hope, like in order to be able to pitch this, not only on Kickstarter, but um, to grants, is I want to have this kind of you know, like uh, some concept art to share, hopefully one animated scene, even if it's a test scene that I scrap in the end, but at least to show the style of animation and, you know, have the story written, have all that kind of set up. And then uh, we look for money. And then if I get money uh, at some point this year, maybe at the end of the year, I can start working on it full time. But I think it's going to be very much part time, part time, part time until, mm -hmm. you know, probably end of 2023. And then I hope once we get funding that within a year, I'll finish it. So hopefully end of 2024, it'll be the end of production. We'll see. So I just want to know if, uh, if you have any advice for uh, animation students who are thinking about either getting to 2D or to 3D. Uh, the first thing I always say is that, you know, as you start working in studios and then if you want to do freelance, um, your, your contacts, your, your connections are basically gold. And your first contacts are your professors and your, the students in the class with you uh, be, who become your colleagues who, you know, will go to different studios and then you can stay in touch with them and they'll get you jobs because getting jobs the old fashioned way where you just like apply rarely was fruitful for me. It was generally, I knew people who knew people who would recommend me. And I have recommended a lot of, you know, colleagues that I know work really well and who are super pleasant and, and, you know, you just kind of keep that ball rolling and you recommend each other and, and that way you get jobs. And later, of course, when you're established, I have the, the you know, awesome moment in my life where uh, people are coming to me because I am fairly well known for what I do. So that's great. But that takes a lot of time to get to that point. So at the very beginning, please be kind to your teachers. Please be kind to your classmates. Um, don't be a shitty person is very important. Uh, you know, try and be a joy to work with because there's going to be always people who are better than you, especially when you're starting out. So please be a peach, like just be really nice. And, you know, hopefully uh, that will help you out. And don't work for free. Please, for our industry, for our self-respect, for all of the other hardworking artists out there, never work for exposure, never work for an opportunity, don't take free internships fuck that you should be paid even if it's minimum wage like I don't care like at least paid something because it's absolutely absurd that this was a thing for so long and we have to put our foot down as an entire industry and say no we deserve money for what we do we also need to eat just because we're artists doesn't mean we like deserve to start so there you go <laughs> that's that's my little bits of advice <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say like oh so when you're you know if we don't work for free that you'll come after them with the oh the bone arrow a hundred percent like that yeah. that is always in my closet i also Good. have a collection of antique knives so don't don't mess with me this don't is mess one with of the me. reasons why i love baroness von bon bon because i find a lot of myself got put into her like she's sweet and cute and wears a pretty dress but don't you fuck with her mm -mm. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. Anyway, I want to thank you for coming on Animated Educate, and I hope you have a great uh, new year and everything. And thank uh, you. I hope you have a wonderful one. Say hello yeah. to your students for me. Okay. And yes, please stay in touch, and please um, invite Felicity Moreland about her documentary, because that's really exciting. And if you like this interview with Tina Naraki, you can subscribe to the channel by pushing that button right there. But 
you can also see her work. This is a, a video of a bunch of uh, pencil tests that she's done. And over here is a bunch of other videos that you might be interested in. And we'll see you next time on Animated Educated.